in time for press review. We're taking a look at some of the biggest stories making headlines um, within the local daily, so you can have an idea of them before you purchase them. But before I we dive into this, my panel this morning, it's very closer to me, is communication expert Mark Pichachi, a member of parliament for Dewa constituency, Honorable Martin Owino, and on my far end, I have Philip Magal. He is an advocate. Gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to have you this morning. Thank you. All right, let's jump straight into it. The Standard newspaper, we have the riddle and uh, the riddle of a governor and a dead hitman, but also Uhuru and May sign deal to return um, of graft cash. And below there on page four and five, you'll see that we followed up on the five billion May saga land, um, lands rather on PSLS CMP in court. Let's begin with this whole puzzle, this whole riddle of uh, uh, of the governor and a dead hitman and i'll begin with you honorable um Owino, with this specific issue yeah. so we have um a, a, a dead suspect now um and yes others are still in custody uh, this has only gone further to to complicate the investigations yeah. do you think at the end of the day police and investigations investigators rather will come down to it uh th this has been uh a nightmare for Kenyans, mm -hmm. where all the crimes committed, all sins, ends up in investigation. And they are never completed. Mm -hmm. We have history of murder all the way to uh, 60s. Up to now, they have not been unearthed. And it, it puzzles me, really. Uh, police cells should be one of the most secured places. And all over we have been hearing committing suicide. Where are the police who guards these cells? So to me, this raises another eyebrow that I don't know what can, can, can uh, really bring to, um, to justice. My take on this is that um, police department, investigation department, uh, the, name it, all the structures needs a reform. And we have said this for a long time so that justice cannot be delayed and cannot be delayed forever for Kenyans. Uh, I, can, I, I read a lot of mischief in this, mm. anyway. Well, Magal is a lawyer. Magal, from a legal perspective, why is it that, like, let's even go to graft cases, mm -hmm. but even such cases of murder that we see in Kenya um, takes forever, and some are not even completed, and it goes five years and still nothing has been done, no one has been arrested. Why? Mm. Yes, uh, first of all, morning, Good uh, morning. Lindsay, and uh, thanks for having me on board today. Uh, this this uh, calls to mind the old uh, tales of uh, the mafia-like killings in Italy and the U.S. Mm -hmm. It reminds you of the Godfather and the Goodfellows and the rest. I mean, the hitman being killed or killing so-called uh, so uh, killing himself within the police cells. Mm -hmm. What does it call into mind? It calls into mind the. The, the, the very investigation of that particular crime. It means either the, uh, the investigative agencies have been compromised or uh, that uh, the police, have, uh, police cells were infiltrated. Uh, because I find it highly unlikely that a hitman would... I, I, I'm presuming that this is the person who pulled the trigger, mm -hmm. that the hitman would kill himself. First of all, uh, highly likely he would have fought off this in court and have won. So I don't see what motivated him to kill himself. Well, others, mm. others um, would commit suicide for the greater good. I in the sense that instead of being caught or, or snitching <laughs> on <laughs> Magal, who is the actual person behind the scenes. This is not, this is not a, a Japan where uh, the, the samurais kill themselves yeah. out of one. Yeah. This is Kenya, <laughs> where if you've been paid 1.8 million, you want to spend it. You want to get, uh, you know you will go to court, you know you'll get bail. And once you're out there, you can draw out these um, prosecutions for a long time, mm -hmm. enjoy some time, uh, such that if at all you are to be convicted, you would have uh, enjoyed some freedom. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I think uh, uh, as a first step, the investigative team should be disbanded mm -hmm. and it should be investigated as well. There should be an inquiry. Uh, nowadays we have the Coroner's Act. Uh, a coroner should look into this matter and give us a, a full report as to whether this was really suicide. Magal, how do you see it ending? Uh, you know, this is Kenya. Nothing comes as a surprise. You know, even with watertight cases. Uh, the way I know the police operates, uh, police are never interested in murder cases. It is for us to look into the justice system. If a police station, if a, you know, police should have targets just like the rest of us. Mm. If a murder, if, if 10 murders are reported in a month, 
the OCAPD and the OCS in that particular police station should tell us how many of those murders have been resolved, like in other jurisdictions. Those ones that co go cold should be reopened and reopened each and every other time, and they should tender uh, their reports to the to the IG and to the president telling Kenyans how many crimes were reported, how many was, uh, were investigated, how many were successfully prosecuted, and so on and so forth. It is till then that we might be able to talk of a justice system that you might be proud of. But what I can tell you for a fact, if you report a case today to the police and it doesn't involve money and you don't cough money, you can be sure you are, you are backing up the wrong tree. Okay, Mark Pichachi, what do you make of this? Uh, first, this is a tale that should read stranger than fiction, but unfortunately, this is a strange tale of uh, high-profile attempted murders in this country. Right. In this country, when you are a high-profile person you and you die, there is usually, the story is usually the same. There's only, in fact, this is only different in that there's only one ingredient mi missing. He was mm -hmm. killed, uh, he was almost killed coming out of a mosque. Most of the time, he was with a girl at night in a shady club, and this unknown assailant love triangles we know the story so this yeah. it goes into the classical tale of how uh, Jacob Juma was killed, uh, Robert Ouko, all these people. So uh, my advice to Kenyans of note, if you know you have a reputation, the best thing to do for yourself is to prepare for your murder and just know that it will not be investigated to the full. The suspect will commit suicide or claim insanity and your name will go the way Msando's name went, Robert Ouko's name went, and that's how it is in Kenya. That, that is the reality. And this is some of the things that we as a nation need to look into. So do you read uh, suspicion into this? Of course you do. There's a lot of suspicion because, number one, uh, the, the person who was shot is, is still alive. So that person could have identified not only who pulled the trigger, but who was the person who instigated this person to pull the trigger. And the fact that um, a, a governor's cousin is mentioned in this uh, tells you that the plot uh, is thicker than, than the story, meaning that uh, there's definitely underhanded currents that are running. Uh, within within the police, within the uh, prison guards that were taking care of, of this person. Right. So, uh, for me, it is not a surprise. How will it end? Well, how did Jacob Juma's story end or Msando's end? We still do not know. Yes, it never ends. But, and that's the thing, Magal. Um, do, does Kenya have agencies, and I want to compare it to the likes of the U.S. where we see the, and, uh, the, um, they have agencies that go and take a look at this investigative um, CSI. We yes. have um, certain bodies FBI. like this. Exactly, FBI. Does Kenya, <laughs> does, do we have... We stuff? have trained personnel, very well trained personnel. But what I can tell you is that if you go report a crime to the police station, you will be lucky if they visit the scene. But that's a police station. I'm talking mm. about like literal government, bodies, mm. agencies, mm. that their key purpose is mm. to investigate crime. Whether it is um, I come and I say uh, my husband beat me mm. or in, in this scenario, agencies that ha that's the like the FBI but, that's their mandate but, but, not to not police who cord traffic but it's, it's a yeah, famous thing yes. it's called the directorate of criminal, criminal investigation yes. Yes. DCI, it exists yes. now you see the problem is in this country is that the DCI investigates based on pressure you see if you want your case to be to be if, if you want your phone to be found mm. it depends on your profile as a Kenyan and if, your it, network if you are honorable and like Mweshimiwa, your pocket, yes if Mweshimiwa mm -hmm. calls the police the way they react is very different from how Bichachi uh, uh, they react to him and how they react to you, Zinzi. Mm -hmm. So the agencies exist. If the problem is your pocket and your fame and your power significant enough to cause action. Mm -hmm. and, yes, and I, I, I just want to mm -hmm. add uh, the major problem we have is the appointing system. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned uh, U.S. The sheriff is in U.S. is elected. His accountability or her accountability is to the people. So they have a free environment of execution of the law. But here, we have a lot of presence from different quarters. You know what you should do, but you can't do it because so and so, who appointed you, who or who may fire you at any time, says no. So secondly, the environment, that environment that we, we operate as Kenyans, we should be liberated. Mm. And that's why we are pushing for the um, elective system, so that areas that are sensitive should have representation of the people. But the worry of having it as an elective, it now becomes a political thing. 
which is okay because um, your first um, um, accountability is to the people themselves. Right. So if you mess up in your term, you, you better be rest assured you're not going back and nobody would, would like to do that. Okay. Uh, I know everything is politicized, but mm -hmm. it works okay. in, in those countries. To me, the biggest problem is corruption. Corruption within the police, ofi uh, police officers. Under all surveys, police has been ranked as number one in corruption perception within this country for as long as we can remember. Mm. For you to report on crime and have an, a detective come to the scene, you know, you would be lucky for that to happen. Right. You would be, be luckier if a suspect was arrested. Most of the time you would be told to go bring the suspect yourself. This is a person who robbed you and you are being told go bring him. <laughs> okay? And if, the, that, if you are not told that, then you will be told to fuel the police uh, land cruiser. Oh, we'll go, uh, we'll go, go fuel. The, we, we need, we need yeah. the petrol for our vehicle. Right. Then you will go bring this fellow. For this person to be prosecuted, you saw another uh, a senior police officer was arrested the other day for trying to, um, to mess with a defilement case somewhere in uh, Nyanza. That is what really happens. Before a fellow gets to see uh, a day in court, mm. you will have parted with money. And that is why I'm saying we, we should come with a target system. These people should have goals. All the crimes, they should tell us every month, they should tell us every six months, every one year, what percentage of crimes reported have been resolved. Their scorecard. Yes. And speaking of getting away with our money, take a look at page five. Senior officials in court for 5.6 billion may come. Yesterday we saw the arrest of about seven people. Individuals um, from Richard Lesiampe, the PS in agriculture, to a few of um, individuals under the NCPP. Now, my question here would be especially to Honorable Owino. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are seeing arrests, fantastic, but no one has been prosecuted and no one has been jailed. Nevertheless, 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 we a lot of Kenyans are asking great, mm. great work that we are seeing from the DPP's office. Yeah, but where is my money as a taxpayer? Where is my money? Where is this 5.6? Where is that NYS? Yeah. Yeah. We still haven't recovered those funds. And then tomorrow, one of the good things that uh, as Parliament, you decided not to increase the 16 VAT. Um, but as tomorrow, we'll be hearing that uh, other things will be coming up in order to find ways of financing the economy. Yet this yeah. economic graft is already happening. So the other big question that Kenyans have in mind is that fantastic. We're seeing a war on corruption. That is good. A first step. But where is my money? Right, exactly. Um, First of all, as parliamentarians, we have vowed mm -hmm. not to put any economical pressure on common one inch, mm. call it Wanjiku or Kinyi, whatever. So even if they go through at the back doors, we, 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 we have actually employed a hands-on now oversight mm -hmm. to see where this uh, mischief comes from. Now, as for um, assets recovery, that is within the law. I'm, I don't know why they don't do it. Um, if you have stolen that, ma that money, that loot should be... Uh, but Kenyans are a little bit complicated. You can, you, can, uh, you can ask the lawyer here. But they should go for those assets. Mm -hmm. As far as this, this is, this is very sad uh, because I know several farmers, they do farm in order to meet their goals, maybe pay school fees or do all the basics. And here you are, you have hired a lorry with the maize and you can't sell it because some five... 10 cartels have already uh, sold their, their loots. I mean, it's sad. It's sad. But right. there's a good thing which is coming out of here. Which is? In the past, you could not touch these PSs because they're all wired to the top. But now that the president has put his foot down, that you carry your own cross, we see them go to the court. Okay. Now, the, the people who are at uh, play here is the DCI because... Arresting is one thing, but having um, criminal, criminalizing uh, reasons or, or evidence is another one. So we, we hope before you arrest, you have to do your, your work very well Bichachi. in order to get through this. In uh, you know, it, it is good news for Kenyan farmers that at least someone uh, is, is paying the price for the pain and the tears that, that farmers are facing. But for me, uh, this net needs to be cast a bit wider. We need to ask ourselves that what are we doing to protect our farmers? For example, there's a very foolish draconian and, 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 and backward law that uh, 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 rather uh, idea that has been fronted by the Ministry of Agriculture called sugarcane zoning. Now, in which world 
Do you want to force a farmer to sell his sugarcane to Mumias, which will pay him back in five years, to Nzoia, which will pay him back in five years, simply because he is in a zone? Right. This is a free market economy. And this is the rape, plunder, and pillaging of our farmers that we've seen in maize, that we've seen in coffee, that we've seen in tea. Uh, coffee, for example, the farmer gets less than 5% of the international value that they're selling. The, 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 the amount of fraud, intellectual fraud, hard work fraud, and the fraud of the money that belongs to the farmer that happens in this country needs to be stemmed and it needs to be stopped today. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Today as we speak, uh, sugarcane farmers have uh, uh, lodged 20,000 cases against the likes of Zonzoya and Mumias to pay them a total of 84 billion Kenya shillings. And my question is this, then are the people of Western and Nyanza poor or have they been robbed? That is my question. If you owe them 84 billion shillings and you're sitting there mm -hmm. saying that you are a company, aren't you a thief? Okay. The people who delivered this maze were a cartels. So the government releases money to pay farmers. And who do you pay first? The cartels. This is the problem with our country, that the farmer is a secondary and citizen. That's, and that's my next question, mm -hmm. Magal, then where does this leave farmers? Of course, a farmer, uh, the farmer is uh, between the ocean and, uh, you know, the devil. What I can say is this. You remember we, the other day there were reports of uh, uh, substandard fertilizers being uh, imported into the country. That is on the one end. At the other end, you can see, uh, you know, they, they have nowhere to take their produce. Uh, and this, to me, you know, it is a problem of tribalism and corruption. And this, this brings out clearly the, 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 the interrelation between favoritism, nepotism, tribalism on the one side, and corruption on the other. You can read the names. They all come from uh, uh, one, one part of the country. And, uh, you know, personally to me, I've been joking that this will be a marathon of a prosecution. And that is what, as Kenyans, we have to question. You know, today we are happy that a man from our tribe has been appointed, but tomorrow it is that same man who's going to mess up, mess, mess up uh, the rest of the country and uh, ourselves included. Look at what Mumia has, uh, has gone through. Look at what Sony Sugar has gone through. What has been the, the, the pitfall which they have uh, fallen into? The fact is that we've had incompetent people who've been appointed into those uh, positions of leadership solely on uh, tribal and uh, favoritism and they have failed to deliver and uh, to make it worse they are stealing from those people that they're supposed to protect right. and these are the facts that we must uh, call, uh, call them out as uh, they are. All, all right mm -hmm. and, and one more story that I'd like for us to touch on lightly because we will go deeper into it in a week mm -hmm. in review in just a few minutes mm -hmm. is what's on the Daily Nation the fact that Prime Minister Theresa May has found she's come back and she's found that Kenya has moved on. I love the Daily Nation headline, how the British lost their place in Kenya, in the sense that, um, uh, and they go on to explain, the UK leader offers a security deal to tackle terrorism, but after years of travel advisory, tough immigration rules and diplomatic distance, Honorable Owino, is it too late for them? Is it too late for this relationship between the UK and um, Kenya to continue to be prosperous? And I love what they say. Today, if there's a terror attack, they will put a travel advisory on Kenya. Nevertheless, if it's for their country where you have someone being stabbed outside parliament we wouldn't do the exact same thing so what what do you make out of it no it's not too late but uh, it's absurd that uh, they distance themselves to give the chinese way to to to, to, to this extent but if you look at the um, trade deficits you'll find that we do we do even much better with the the brits uh, more than the chinese right now because if you look at the uh, difference between the import and export, uh, I think we're doing very well, mm -hmm. uh, more than Chinese and, uh, uh, and the U.S. Mm -hmm. For example, um, right now we export, uh, we, we import 390 billion, uh, and we only export 9.9 .9 billion. That is, that is, that is, that is a crime mm -hmm. in trade. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in British, we, we do, I think, um, 30, uh, export and 38 at least what we export is more than what we import yeah. from Britain so I think being uh, our older friends they are coming back is uh, is really welcome or however late it is and and, and what you said for uh, travel advisory you know that's why I like the Western countries how they organize themselves if 
if they don't do that, mm -hmm. they will be held accountable by their citizens. They have to tell you what is happening wherever you want to go. So that is fine. That does not that that does not neg that does not negate our our responsibility mm -hmm. as as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But I think they are welcome, and um, um, I should say, uh, may welcome and. Um, feel welcome in, in the, the, the late introduction. All right, um, Mark Pichachi, your thoughts? Just likely because we will be talking about it. I, I, think, I think Brexit is a blessing for Kenya and for Africa. The United Kingdom finds herself as a bride with her gown standing at the aisle with no groom. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the only suitor that is left is the virile African continent, which is rising to the occasion in the sense that you saw in her speech her detail the big four agenda. She detailed the president's fight against corruption. She detailed the president's fight and Kenya's fight against uh, 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 what do you call it, terrorism and the powers that would try to, to terrorize Kenya. What does that tell you? That they are paying attention. And that is an opportunity. Right. Because the UK is no small player in the international stage. Okay, Magal, I'm going to let you have the last as we're going on this commercial mm. break. And I want you to comment on the picture of the day, given it has to do with all matters, um, the, the Supreme Court. We know what has been happening and we'll discuss yes. about it in mm -hmm. detail. Yes, yes. But just slightly touch on this on the photo uh you know uh, of course the supreme court or the, or the high court of kenya has been the center of attention the, this past week and uh, for not a very good reason yeah uh, <laughs> but then that is a, a long story that we'll go into in detail we will yeah. all right and that's right philip bagal is right we're going to take a quick commercial break to sort of um take all this and digest all this and that has been a look at the local dailies when we come back from this short quick commercial break we'll dive into weekend review and see how the week has been here in kenya so fill up your coffee mug we'll be right back <laughs>